So I have Dr. Joseph Akwe with me um, for the Faithful Physician Series. With this series, I really want to focus on um, physicians who are excellent in what they do. They use evidence-based medicine, but are also faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. And um, I think that the two can blend very well, in my opinion. But I would like to hear from Dr. Joseph Akwe um, about his experiences. But before we start that, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, where you have done your training, and um, what specialty you practice in. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on this uh, uh, segment. I think it's really important to kind of get that perspective out there. Uh, a little bit about me. So born and raised in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Uh, both my parents had migrated there uh, when they were younger. Uh, did my schooling at the University of Toronto in St. George. I initially studied uh, kinesiology. And I did uh, um, some post back years, if you will, at the York University before attending medical school at Meharry Medical College. Okay. Uh, and then I did my uh, residency at the University of Minnesota, uh, just graduated last year in uh, June. And I started my attending job as a urologist uh, in Douglasville, Georgia with Wellstar. Nice. Um, so that's where currently I'm at. I'm a young baby attending and uh, learning as I go along. You're a baby attending, but you're a senior in education. How many years have, has it been for you with all the training? Oh, man. Well, if we got undergrad, so that's four plus two. And then we add med school, it's another four. Uh, and then we add uh, residency, it's five. So 15 years of post-secondary education. So you're no baby -o. <laughs> No baby -o. That's, that's very true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's awesome. So, okay, this is just a random question. Toronto versus Minnesota, which one's colder? Oh, so Minnesota is definitely colder. Okay, that's uh, good. It, it, it is the land of lakes, so whatever they call it, 10,000 lakes. So you get the lake effect cold. Right. Toronto snows more. Uh, okay. Though Minnesota can sometimes rival it as well, but definitely yeah. Minnesota is colder. <laughs> I was just curious. <laughs> All right, so the first question that I have for us is, what does a, Chris, a Christian physician mean to you? Well, I think it's it's kind of as you alluded to. I mean, uh, being a Christian is is all encompassing. So it's always interesting when people say, "What is it like to be a Christian physician or a Christian father or a Christian caregiver?" Right. Ultimately, at the core of all those is what does it mean to be a Christian, and what does it mean to exemplify Christ and what you do and what you say and how you act. And I think that being a physician, you know, you take the roles and responsibilities that are required of you as a physician and you fit those within the framework of Christianity and what you do anyway or what you strive to do. So being a Christian physician is being a Christian who happens to be a physician and making sure that the ideals and, and uh, attitudes and mindset I bring uh, to my faith is the same that I bring to the workplace. Right. That's a, that's a good answer. I, I totally agree with that. It's not, um, it's not mutually exclusive. And I think kind of the, the Christian hails over everything, right? And everything else just falls under it. Um, but yeah, I totally agree. Um, okay, so another question I have for you is, as a Christian, do you feel that it's difficult to practice medicine and still believe in the power of God? Um, why or why not? So it's, it's always interesting because I remember when I was going to undergrad, for example, and you know, the people, the, the church uncles and the people, they're like, oh, you know, when you go there, be careful because they're going to tell you all this stuff and mm -hmm. it's going to be uh, at odds with your faith. And, uh, you know, a lot of the educators and the classmates and the people you meet, they have the mindset that, you know, Christianity shouldn't be mixed with education, especially in the medical or biomedical realm. But uh, I think that uh, when your faith is, is, when you do have a good base in terms of your faith, a lot of the things I learned in undergrad, it was just almost reinforcing, and same with med school, reinforcing like the majesty of God and the fact that he could create such a complex creature because it's crazy to me, like all the sicknesses and all the anatomy and the physiology and how things come to work together. Uh, so I think that for me, strengthened my faith in terms of uh, just 
looking at having a deeper understanding and appreciation of what that creation uh, man was. Uh, and I think another thing is that it can get difficult at times, especially when you're not on the physician side. So uh, for example, um, as I may or may not have mentioned, my mother passed away uh, last year, last two years from COVID. And, you know, we were, we, that was one of the first times I was on the other side of things. And that shook my faith a little bit because, you know, we prayed and we were going off evidence-based medicine at the time. This was pre-vaccine and everything. And, uh, and you know, she passed away and she didn't make it. And, and situations like that can definitely shake your faith, uh, especially when you have patients who have poor outcomes and those patients you've gotten close to, they can shake your faith. But it's not that it shakes my faith in Christ. It's just that you go through that period where, you know, why did things have to work out like this? And why did this happen? But uh, it's, you know, those are temporary and it kind of just forces you to go back and reflect to the basic principles that, you know, ultimately God is in control and, mm -hmm. and uh, everything come together for his good. Uh, so I think that, you know, in a nutshell, I definitely felt that my education undergrad and in medical school kind of served to reinforce my faith. Of course, I also had the advantage of going to an HBCU and a lot of those are very faith-based. So it's not like they even kind of strove to give us that understanding that, you know, we're called, they always said, we're called to the second greatest calling uh, right after ministry. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think that it, it really kind of helped me put my medical education in perspective yeah. with my faith. I 100% I agree with that. Um, you know, as an OBGYN, delivering babies is crazy. You know, it's like, how did two small molecules come together and make this human who has a little heart and little kidneys, you know, all the little organs that are working perfectly, you know, and of course you have instances where it doesn't work perfectly. And, you know, those are sad cases, but, you know, to believe that, not just to believe, to see it, to see it come to life, that some small molecule has made a human and the human has things that are working and functioning without it even saying or having to learn how to do it. It just happens on its own. So it's very interesting. And then watching how the parents, are in awe, <laughs> you know, of, yeah. of what just come out. So <laughs> I agree. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, so with what you're saying, I think it really segues us right into our next question. Um, you talking about being on the physician side and being on the patient side or um, having to deliver bad news to a patient or when you get close to a patient. So give us some examples of how you've been able to minister to, to your patients. Um, with giving them the science and giving them the recommendations based off of science, but then also at the same time, being a man of faith. How, how do you balance the two? How do you minister to them? Yeah, I mean, uh, as a urologist, a lot of my job is a diagnosis and sharing news of prostate cancer, kidney cancer, bladder cancer, things of that nature. And it happens, I would say fairly often, but I have to deliver such news. And especially I deliver news kind of across the spectrum. Like I can, I just told an 18 year old last day that he has testicular cancer and is still gonna have to, he's gonna have to get an orchiectomy. And then on the flip side, I spoke with a 60 something year old who had bladder cancer and he's gonna need a cystectomy. So uh, those things, you know, it's, I think that my faith definitely empowers my ability to share such news. And then of course, I, with patients, especially when you're working with a patient to have a longitudinal care because you meet them from diagnosis to treatment and then post-operative care and surveillance. Um, when I get to know them, and especially as I get to kind of get insight into their belief system, uh, I definitely always make an attempt to, to appeal to that because ultimately I think that, you know, it's, I, I never liked the idea of just sharing bad news and telling you this is that and this is it and then just going on that way because once again, being on the patient side of things, you realize that at the moment they get that bad news, they may not hear anything else you say about the care and the therapy, but what they do hear is you speaking life into the situation and saying, hey, you know what? I know I just gave you some bad news, so let's just pause for now. I can give you all this information, but how are you feeling? You know, how, where are you coming from? Where is your mind right now? And you know, some of the patients, they can tell they're distraught over this situation. But once you appeal to their faith and you're able to minister to them and say, you know what, like, you know, 
It's the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And this is the same God that brought them through so many things. We can bring you through like, you know, all the knowledge and everything I've gained and all the skill is a consequence of him kind of granting me his grace because this is not my ability, you know, but I'm going to use that same attitude and that same grace to do my best to treat you. And ultimately, I think that that kind of helps ground them and then we can have the whole discussion on the logistics of things and all of that. But I think it's very important to minister. And sometimes, even if I don't know whether my patient is Christian or what have you, I just say, you know, if if you don't mind, I'd love to pray with you and and like, you know, just kind of put the situation. And most of the patients, you know, I've never really had a situation where somebody said no. Um, and uh, I've conversely had uh, patients pray for me. Uh, and nursing staff pay for me. And I think that was always also very powerful. And it's a way of building rapport with your patient beyond the usual, how is it kids or how is it work and things like that. So um, I definitely take advantage of it when I can. And I think it's important. And I think it definitely helps, uh, especially when your job entails giving bad news right. on a relatively frequent basis. Yeah, that's so awesome. Um, that like you pray for your patients, but then I turn around and pray for you guys. That hasn't happened to me yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the first time, the, the first time I thought about that was the patient praying for me, and I was yeah. like, wow. Aww. I think I would have cried. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely very emotional because I was an intern, yeah. and I mean, remember intern here is not fun, so right. it was definitely a, a moment I don't forget. The yeah. patient I don't forget. Yeah, that's so true. Like. I think, um, you know, now as an attending, you have more continuity. Like when you're in residency, when you're on night shift, you're going to miss all the patients that you're seeing in clinic, you know, during that time. So now you actually like build a relationship with your patients. So sometimes yeah. you walk in the room, they're like, hey, how are you? How's your new year? And, you know, I'm just like, oh, <laughs> care about yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's really cool. But um, that's awesome. And I would agree. I don't think I've had... I don't think I've had any patient that I've asked like, hey, can I pray for you? Say no. And I normally don't ask like, are you a Christian? Okay, can I pray for you? You know, yeah. I just, as I feel led, I just do it. And I feel yeah. like, yeah, 100% of the time people always say yes. I don't think I've had one say no. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. All right, my last question for you. So um, what advice or encouragement can you give to the viewers on how to be bold in their faith while still being excellent in, in what they do in their profession? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I, I go back to when I was first born again and, and I always used to say, you know, even before I studied, I'd always just say a little prayer and say, just God, give me the grace, you know, stand behind me and be in front of me and, and, yeah. and guide, my, guide my steps even as I'm studying. And I think that same mindset is gonna carry you through undergrad and through medical school and through residency, especially through residency mm. and, uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, through attending, attending her. So I think that, you know, when, when you say being bold in your faith, that can manifest itself in many ways. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be preaching in the operating room with your attending in the middle of a stressful case, but it, it could mean just keeping prayer central because, uh, just like with life, as you advance further and further, it's easier to make excuses to, to step away from your faith, to step away from dwelling in the word and, and fellowshipping with people, especially, and especially given these times. Uh, so I think boldness in that sense means like holding on to the things that you did when you started your faith or wherever your faith journey started. And that means keeping those connections keeping that fellowship, keeping that reflection of the word, keeping prayer as a central thing and not using the busyness of life and your profession to, to get away, get in the way of that. And I think that's that's what I encourage people to do because, you know, uh, faith is going to be central. Your job is going to come and go. Uh, patients will come and go. Experiences will come and go. Training will come and go. But you have to have, what is the thing that's going to center you? Um, and that is your faith. And if you hold on to that, uh, the rest of things will fall into place. Yeah. So that's always the encouragement I give people that, you know, boldness in that sense means just holding on to, to your faith and, and, uh, and, and trusting in God and, and the grace that he's given you to get to this point. Because once, once you get to training, there are going to be times where you feel like you can't do it. 
Listen. And, you know, it's a very, very tried and true saying that he did not bring you to this point and to leave you there. Um, so that is definitely uh, what I encourage people, what I remind people uh, at the end of the day. Yeah. Wise man. <laughs> Wise. That's, that's, that's good. And it's simple. You know, it's not, it's simple. It, it's not really no. steps. It's just continuing to abide. And in that yeah, place, exactly. you show you what you need to do. He will yeah. tell you. It's to very go easy to fall away because residency can break you down and, yeah. and the business can break you down. And I think that people just fall away from what right. they were doing beforehand. And if you, you know, if you allow yourself to drift away, you know, God is always going to be ready for you to come back, but he's not going to stop you from drifting away and then you can, you can get pretty far. So I always encourage people to just remember where you came from uh, and hold on to that. Stay anchored. That's good. Yeah. All right, Dr. Akwe. So where can, where can people find you? Do you have a website? Do you have social media links? Yeah. Uh, uh, Instagram, uh, J and then uh, academic, A-K-A-D. E-M-I-K underscore M-D is probably the main, uh, my main social media domain. Okay. Um, and I can share that with you as well. But uh, that's usually where I'll be. Um, and usually just a lot of shenanigans and hanging out with the family and sharing the occasional medical advice. Well, we'll be looking for you for your shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. I really, really oh, appreciate course. it. And I know that um, all you viewers are going to be so encouraged by what he has shared because he, he definitely dropped some wisdom and it's simple. So it's very implementable. So um, you guys check this, make sure that you tune in, make sure that you take notes on what he said and you will be successful keeping God at center, keeping anchored. So y'all have a wonderful day. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks again for having me. Of course.